it's now part four on page 343 we're looking at the torso this is part four of the torso portion of the muscular system and we just spoke about the um, the femoral hernia which occurs in the femoral triangle here um, I should be drawing it this way or, or like this this is a femoral triangle there's a sartorius muscle here there's a uh, superficial muscle called gracilis here and then there is the um, the uh, inguinal either canal or ligament okay so now we actually have to we have to determine that males and females are different in this inguinal region uh, females have a simple tuck and uh, hem right here so you can imagine that if you're the seamstress working on this um, that you would just take that fold underneath and you would sew off uh, a nice little hem right here and that would be called a uh, ligament, a um, inguinal ligament, and that's what the situation is with females. However, males um, are going to use that spot as a canal. So in males, again, there is that folding over of the connective tissue right here, but it's a loose folding over and um, it's going to allow for some space there as if you were allowing space for a drawstring uh, pair of pants, right? So some, sometimes you can buy a pair of slacks that have nothing but a drawstring at the waist and you just pull it and, and that's how it tightens. Here we, uh, we have um, gonads right in here just before birth. Uh, both the male and the female gonads are over here, the ovary, the testis is over here, and the pelvis. Uh, but the male, just before birth, is going to send their gonad uh, down this way, and it's actually going to exit the uh, pelvic cavity. And the way that it does that is that it finds a little opening here in the connective tissue, and it travels down this canal. Okay, so it's sort of like it's the drawstring in the uh, in the hem right here and it comes down through and um, then the testis bringing all of its equipment with it uh, arteries nerves vein um, a little ductus deferens and so on uh, it's going to bring all of that uh, good stuff with it uh, that we'll study much later in the course and there's going to be this uh, canal normally the canal uh, is going to seal itself off, as it were, so it's not patent except for the things that are living there inside the canal. And um, if you're the physician that's doing a general exam for a male, you'll ask uh, the gentleman uh, to look to one side, turn their head, and cough so they don't cough on you. And you're going to place your finger right there on the external, uh, the external ring and you're going to feel to see if you feel any pressure, any little puff or anything of air uh, from the inside. And you'll determine whether or not there's patency here. There's not supposed to be patency. There's not supposed to be anything felt if that individual coughs. Okay, occasionally this is an open and patent pathway, and it's possible for a small intestine to come down through there just like it's possible for a small intestine to come down through here. And so usually these things are detected uh, by using a barium sulfate milkshake that somebody drinks, and then they, uh, they do a series of x-rays uh, to watch the barium sulfate travel through the digestive system from the stomach to the small intestine. And then sometimes the small intestine will actually be displaced here, for the femoral hernia or through here for the uh, inguinal hernia. Only males uh, will experience an inguinal hernia. Females do not have this feature which is referred to as the uh, inguinal canal. Okay, no inguinal canal for females. Sorry about that. Okay, females have inguinal ligaments. Okay, so um, I needed you to sort of see that uh, down here we have a little um, arrangement. Let's take a look at this. Here's the linea alba in the middle. Here are the two uh, rectus uh, femoris muscles on uh, the left and the right side. And then here we have the, um, how shall I say, the abdominal muscles that are going to insert here. So um, here's the skin here, 
we have the uh, external oblique coming this way. Its tendon goes over the top of rectus abdominis and meets up at the linea alba. And then we have transversus is the deepest. The transversus goes underneath rectus uh, femoris and goes to the linea alba. And then we have um, internal oblique, which is in between here. It's the middle one. And its tendon splits on either side. Half of it goes under, half of it goes over the top of rectus abdominis. Okay. And it meets up here and inserts onto the linea alba. So that's the arrangement that's made. And again, that if we were to look on the inside here, we would notice that there is an arcuate line this way underneath which uh, things are a little bit more thin and unsubstantial. So people do have a tendency, uh, often later in life, to have a little bit of, um, how shall I say, poking through, a little bit of herniation in the thinned thinned out areas here of the very lowest uh, abdominal wall regions overlying the pelvis. Okay, that's everything that I can tell you from this perspective right here. Then we take a look at um, the pelvic floor. Here we're looking down inside. Here is the, um, this is called the false pelvis here. This is the true pelvis beyond the, um, the brim. Do you see the brim here? And we have the, uh, the sacral prominence, which would come forward right here. And then we have the musculature. Now, in this particular uh, case, we have the anterior, posterior. We have a female uh, because we can see that there is a, um, a urethra right there. We can also see that there is a, a vaginal passageway right here. And we can also see that there's an anal canal right here. Okay, so all of these, we're going to be transmitting urine, we're going to be transmitting uh, feces over here, we're going to be transmitting um, either menses or possibly a uh, neonate uh, through there. Okay, so, um, and we have the musculature here, uh, which provides the support for the floor. Let's take a look here. We have levator ani, and we have coccygeus. So, this muscle here with this tendon that goes this way, do you see it? That's considered levator ani, levator ani. This group of muscles through here with this tendon running this way, do you see that tendon right there? That's defining for us coccygeus. So we have two major muscles. Uh, we have this one central region here. We could think of it as left and right, but it's mostly sort of overlying the whole thing here in the middle region and that's levator ani, but we do have a left and a right coccygeus. And, uh, and here we have that arc right here. Do you see the arc of tendon? Just the way you like it. Okay, so um, that's the floor of the pelvis. Okay, then we, um, we can also take a look here at the um, external genitalia, and we can see also from a different point of view, we can see levator ani right there. So we can see it from that perspective. Uh, the anus does have its own sphincters. Okay. And then we also have uh, musculature at the base of the external genitals, just the way you like it. Uh, we have the um, ischio uh, cavernosus, the bulbo uh, spongiosus uh, as uh, musculature through here. Usually I don't test that particular thing, but you can see that it's it's present there. In general, there is no musculature um, actually intrinsic to the penis, just at the base of the penis. There is a little bit of musculature, and here at the base of the clitoris, there is also musculature. So that's to be considered just the way you like it. Okay, and then uh, from here on, we're going to be looking at shoulders and hips, which uh, will include, technically, um, muscles of the upper and lower extremity, but um, we're going to be dealing with them as part of the torso. So I'll press on to the next event here in just a moment.